ever send a file over FTP, it's super common and you know that you're using a network protocol to do so. Well, the problem with that and many of the other protocols like Telnet is that you're sending unencrypted information over the internet and we can't have that now, can we? Especially since I taught you how to encrypt your passwords in the previous video. So let's talk SSH or secure shell, why we want to SSH and how to connect to a secure server because let's face it, there's just things that we do on the internet at coffee shops that we don't want anybody else knowing about. Let's get this misnomer out of the way completely. It doesn't matter if your Wi-Fi connection is secured with a password or completely open. You're vulnerable either way. No matter where you are, if you hop on your computer, connect to the internet, type URLs, and click away, you will be traceable. Here's what I mean. I'm using one of my favorite pieces of software, Wireshark. You can see that there's nothing stopping someone from sniffing out every packet you send across the web. There's nothing stopping you from being man in the middle. But when you connect to a secure shell, your browsing data and information that was initially being sent over the web as plain text becomes encrypted when you use SSH. And that greatly reduces your risk of the stuff we were talking about before, like eavesdropping and MITM attacks. So let me show you what I mean. This is Stan. He's a criminal. So what can I do? I don't trust anyone in this coffee shop with my bank account info. You probably do trust your home network though. What if you could connect back to your home network and route your traffic out through there? That would be awesome, wouldn't it? So let's get the terminal out and we'll type in our SSH command. I want to connect to my server, so I'll SSH nixia at home.nixiepixel.com. Obviously yours will be different. Now the first time that you log in, you'll get a prompt like you see here to accept the host certificate. You should be on a trusted network when accepting the host certificate. Once we've accepted the host certificate, we won't have to do it again because it's permanently added. With SSH, you're protected by public key cryptography and SSH key authorization verifies that the server you connect to is really yours through a magic number called the host fingerprint. So now we'll type the SSH command that we'll use most often when we're in coffee shops. So SSH into our server, dash D, which is creating a dynamic SSH proxy, and 8080 is the port number. It could be different for you. Now you should be prompted for a password, and I have KeyPass at the ready. I love this application. It's great for secure password management, and I talked about it in previous videos, so you have to check that out copy and pasted it securely into the terminal, and bam, I'm now connected to my server. And did you know Llama Linux comes with absolutely no warranty? So we're not done yet, we still have to configure our browser to use the proxy. For this, I like to use a plugin called Foxy Proxy. So here we are, the Foxy Proxy download page. You have it for Firefox, Chrome, and I guess people still use Internet Explorer. This plugin beats the pants off of browser's default proxy settings, and it makes switching back and forth between proxies painless. It also has some other security features I'll explain in a bit. And once you do the browser reset, click on that little fox icon that showed up on your toolbar, and then click add new proxy. And we want manual proxy configuration. And for your host, the IP address, there's no place like home, 127.0.0.1, your local host. This makes sure that your unencrypted packets never leave your computer, and that's always good. And the port is the same that you use when setting up the SSH tunnel, so mine is 8080. Make sure that the SOX proxy is checked because the dash D option that you use in the terminal when you SSH starts up not an HTTP proxy, but a SOX proxy. Yay, gotta be consistent. Now you wanna name your proxy because you might have a whole bunch. You never know if you wanna watch Doctor Who, you may just have to have a Proxy coming from the UK, yes, that could be a thing. Oh, and be sure to check that box that says perform remote DNS lookups through this proxy. DNS is pretty vulnerable and a bad guy could easily route your traffic through their server by spoofing DNS. Also, it would be pretty pointless to go through all these steps when a cookie has been poisoned by a hacker to ruin your day, so we'll also wanna clear all application data and remove all cookies before using this proxy. Click OK and close out of it. And you want to make sure you enable it because the default is disabled. You can do so by going this way or going up to the fox icon, right clicking and then using the proxy that you decided, which mine is Secure Llama. Once the proxy is enabled, you want to check your IP address. So when I have the proxy disabled, it'll show my true information. 
and I'm hanging out in the Philippines right now hoping to help out. So that's where I am, that's my true information. When I'm using the proxy though, it shows my server, which is in California. So there you go. And now you're set. If your IP and location matches your server and not the public Wi-Fi or coffee shop you're in, you're doing it right and you're much safer for it. So um, yeah, there's just no reason that you'd want to be surfing naked on Wi-Fi. It's not smart. Your data, as in life, you want to always use protection. Yeah. Bad joke is bad. Thanks for watching OS Salt. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on next week's episode of All Things Open Source. I might just tell you how to man in the middle of someone. On my way to the Philippines, I stopped in Japan, and they're known for their tech, but they have tons of surprises, as you can see. The results of a little tiny product that helped me multitask a lot and really surprised me. Check it out. Though I brought it with me to Asia, Flygrip is made right in the USA, and it's the only removable accessory that gives you total one-handed operation of your mobile devices. Just to fix it to your tablet, ebook, or smartphone so you can focus on the important things, like awkwardly eating ramen noodles. Yeah. Flygrip even helps you steady your phone's camera to capture the shots that really matter. And best of all, a portion of all sales through the link below will go to my favorite charity, One Laptop Per Child, so you'll also be empowering the world's poorest children through education. So try it out. There's no risk with their 60-day satisfaction guarantee. How will you Flygrip?